Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you a cool DIY. This is actually an awesome DIY that I recently learned about when I was talking with Amy from The Green Millennial on our interview together. Sorry, it took me a while to get there. My brain was just slowly ticking away. It was a bit slow today. My mouth was faster than my brain, which is like makes no sense I know anyway yes yeah, so I was talking with Amy from the green millennial and she was telling me about how you can make your own apple cider vinegar using the cores from apple peels cores from apples using the cores from apples or the apple peels themselves so like so the part that you usually throw away in the compost or in the bin you can actually turn them into apple cider vinegar now today I'll be using whole apples because I recently got some organic apples from the supermarket and they did come in plastic which is a bit of a bummer, but I'm going to recycle the plastic in my soft plastics recycling, so it won't go to landfill, which is good. But if you can, do try and avoid getting apples in plastic wrap. I will. I'm looking when the markets start up again. I'm really going to be looking for some organic produce from there, so I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, moving on to what we're talking about in this video, which is apple cider vinegar. So I've been wanting to actually make apple cider vinegar for quite a while now. It has been in the back of my mind, but when she told me you can use peels and apple cores to make it, I was like, I need to get on this because it's just so healthy and it's a great way to reuse, I guess, waste that you would just throw in a compost, which is what I usually do. I usually put apple cores in the compost and just put them in my compost on my garden. But now I'm putting them in apple cider vinegar to try that out. So, I'm going to be making that today and sharing that with you guys, so hopefully you enjoy it. I hope you do, and if you make it yourself, do share with me how it goes for you, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I feel like I'm talking like at 100 miles an hour today. I'm sorry about that. I hope you, hope you can keep up with me. <laughs> so if you guys have any apple cores or apple peels left over from when you've had some apples, just make sure they're organic, just store them in a glass jar, and you can just keep adding to it until you've filled a glass jar about two-thirds or three quarters of the way full and then you can start making apple cider vinegar yourself so the thing I want to stress with you when you are making apple cider vinegar or when you do buy it from the store is you want to have the mother in it which is basically all the good bacteria that has now fermented the apples to make the apple cider vinegar and that's what's created this I guess mother is what they call it it's just like a cloudy almost like a film that sits on top of the apple cider vinegar and that's the good bacteria that's now keeping it from growing rotten it's actually fermenting it now you don't actually have to eat the mother you can actually scrape that little um, fermented layer off the top and you can just store it and use it later on as like the starter to make more apple cider vinegar the process is actually very similar to kombucha so when you make kombucha you also get that um they call it scoby which is what sits on the top of the kombucha when it's finished and you just store it in leftover kombucha and you just keep using that to, as a starter to keep the fermenting going and you can make more kombucha with it. I usually dilute apple cider vinegar with some water and I take it like that. Just be sure that when you do have apple cider vinegar to slosh water around in your mouth afterwards to make sure that it doesn't damage your enamel because it's quite acidic. So just slosh water around after you've like drunk it, drunk it, drank it, drunk it. I my English after you've had it and slosh water around and it helps just to clean the enamel and take any apple cider vinegar kind of off your teeth so it doesn't kind of wear away the enamel over time. Now some tips to keep in mind before we get started. Ensure all the equipment that you use is been cleaned well before you go to use it because that then has bacteria on it and it can introduce bacteria into the apple cider vinegar and cause it to rot and um, go mouldy. And that's a shame because then your batch, you can't use it then because it can be toxic and you don't want to drink that. So you always want to make sure that your equipment has been cleaned very well. I actually made sure to put boiling water into my glass jar before I went to use it and then let it air dry and then it was ready to go. Now, like I said earlier, you will notice a scum line kind of form on top of your apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. And that's normal, so don't worry about that. But mould is not. So if you do see mould on top of your apple cider vinegar, you can't use it so you have to kind of pour it away because it's, un it's undrinkable so make sure that if it has any type of mold on it you don't use it also to prevent mold as well is to make sure that the apples are fully submerged in the solution to prevent them rotting or getting moldy so when you are like pouring the water over the top you want to make sure it sits above the line of the apples and if they are floating up or like bobbing you can get something to like a clean glass jar to just sit on that and press them down 
until they like kind of stay under the water and then it will help to keep them from going moldy. Alrighty, that's pretty much all my tips that I have before we get started. So without further ado, let's get straight into making it. Woo! To begin with, you want to grab your organic apples or organic apple cores and peels. I used organic apples that I bought from the supermarket, again wrapped in plastic, which I recycled in my soft plastics recycling. Then you need to grab a clean quart sized glass jar. I had already cleaned mine by just pouring boiling water into it and then letting it air dry. Once you have those, fill the jar three quarters of the way with apple scraps. I just cut up those apples and pop them in. If you're using whole apples, just roughly chop them like I did, just before you pop them into the jar. Then, once you've got all the apples in the jar, you want to dissolve the cane sugar into the water. Then pour the sugar water over the apples until they are completely submerged. Add a little additional water if you need to, to ensure that the apples are completely covered. I had to use my fingers a little bit just to push the apples down as I found that I kept bobbing up a little bit, but you can use a small glass jar to weigh the apples down if need be, as any apples that are exposed to the air may become mouldy. Then you want to cover with a cheesecloth or coffee filter and secure with the rubber band. Then store it in a dark place at room temperature. Leave it for around three weeks and check on it every few days to make sure that the apples are staying under the water and to ensure that no mold is growing. Each time I checked on the apple cider vinegar over the next few weeks, I removed some of the apple pieces that had floated to the top and were exposed to air just as a precaution to prevent any mold growing. They weren't moldy yet, but I just did it just in case, just to prevent it getting moldy in future. You don't have to do this, I just did this as a precaution, so feel free to remove any pieces that you find exposed to air or leave them be. Just ensure that when you go to cover it back up again, that you make sure that all the pieces are submerged in the water, again to prevent it becoming mouldy. I added some more filtered water in each time I went to cover it up again, just to make sure that all the pieces were submerged. After three weeks, strain the apple pieces out and return the liquid to the jar. You can compost the scraps. Recover the jar with your cheesecloth or coffee filter and put the jar back in a dark spot for another three to four weeks. Just stirring every few days again to make sure that it's going well and no mold is occurring. When the apple cider vinegar has reached the tartness you like, you can put a lid on it or transfer it to a different jar with a lid and then it's ready to start using. I poured my apple cider vinegar into a glass bottle just for nice appearance sake but you can keep yours in a nice clean glass jar. When I take apple cider vinegar I have about one tablespoon diluted in it one cup of filtered water. I also kept one cup of apple cider vinegar left over at the end to keep the scoby in just to start another batch later on.
So my apple cider vinegar is finally ready. Ah, I'm just so, so happy with how it turned out. You can even see the mother at the bottom. I'm not sure if it doesn't focus on my face. You can see it. Yeah, it's just floating at the bottom of the the jar has some in this i've left some of the apple cider vinegar over a bit like when i made kombucha just left about a cup in there because there's a scoby that was growing on the top i don't know if you saw back when i was showing you guys the unveiling at the end but there was a bit of a scoby lining the top of the jar and the mother was at the bottom as well so you can use that scoby when you make apple cider vinegar another day so when you want to use it later on pop it in there a bit like kombucha with the apples and things and that just helps to start like, your apple cider vinegar again so i'm going to keep this in a dark dry cool place just out of the sunlight and just keep it there until i want to use it again i just make sure that i don't cap it because if you cap it you cut off the airflow and it can kill the scoby inside so i've just left that in there i'm going to pop it away and then i have my apple cider vinegar ready to go but unlike kombucha you don't want to drink it <laughs> as is. I usually get a tablespoon and then I put that in with some filtered water just to dilute it and then I just take it each morning or before I have a meal and it just helps to get that stomach acid going. There's so many wonderful beneficial properties. Now if you want to find the recipe it is linked in my description below so you can find it there. Yeah I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to start using this. I'm just so over the moon with how well it turned out like I'm making my own apple cider vinegar. It's just like oh, so cool. So I'm going to get started on using that and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys in one of my future videos or more of my future videos. Bye!